Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain. I'm Lynn. And today we are going to be talking about and reviewing Forbidden Lands. Now if you are a regular watcher of my channel, you will know that we already did a, or I did rather, a review to the box set for Forbidden Lands as a starting point for this game. Um, and I, we also filmed three sessions of a campaign, uh, which if you've been watching along have already gone up. And now it is time to review the actual game. So we have play been playing this a bunch. I've been game mastering. You've been one of the player characters. And we had some of our friends over. Uh, which definitely check out those, those playthroughs if you're interested in, in seeing some actual game sessions of Forbidden Lands. But uh, the short of it... Uh, well, first off, let me say thank you very much to Free League Publishing for sending me a free copy of this box set for, of Forbidden Lands to do content with. I have thoroughly enjoy doing tons of content with this game uh, and I really appreciate getting the uh, the review copy. Now this game is published by Free League and Modifius as they are appear there on the back and this is a a role-playing game with an interesting mix of old school and new school elements. So the system uses six-sided dice and the usual way it works is that if you want to do a specific task you get a number of dice of different colors each for your equipment, your attribute, and your skill. So you should have three different colors of six-sided dice mostly. Some special abilities and special pieces of equipment can let you use eight-sided or ten-sided, and in the case of your pride, even a twelve-sided die for it. But generally, uh, it's mostly six-sided dice. Mm -hmm. And you roll those dice. If you get uh, on a normal kind of difficulty, as long as you get any sixes, you succeed. Uh, then you get one chance to push it. If you push it and re-roll those dice, you get another chance for sixes. Though you have, when you push it, you have to leave any sixes you already got, plus any ones you got either on the equipment or the attribute dice. Ones on skill dice don't count. Skill dice are actually kind of the best kind of die because of that. Because then when you push it, ones will do damage either to your equipment or your, um, or your attribute. So you may succeed now, but you have something bad happen also. and um, But they also give you willpower points, which is the main way to activate lots of special abilities, as well as cast spells if you're a magic-using character. Mm -hmm. And then in addition, to, uh, even after you decide whether you're pushing it or not, once per session you can roll your pride die if you can justify to the Game Master that the particular task you're doing is towards your pride. Which, like, What was your pride during the game? It was... Mine was I only steal from people who deserve it. Right. So if you were, like, picking a lock on somebody who was, you know, a nasty individual and really deserved it because you were all Robin Hoodie, you could justify it and you could be like, okay, I still failed even after the push my lock. I'm going to roll a d12. And if you roll anything larger than a six-sided die, a six or a seven is a, is a six. An eight or a nine is two sixes. A ten... Uh, and an 11 are three sixes, and a 12 on a 12 side die is four sixes. Now, the reason why you'd want more than one six is usually mostly for opposed rolls. Things like attacking and parrying at the same time. More sixes means that side succeeds while the other side fails. Uh, or, or like sneaking uh, versus someone doing a scouting check to try to spot you. If you want to beat them, you got to roll more sixes than them. Mm -hmm. So that's why you, know, you might want lots of sixes. So then uh, a brief aside, the system for armor is they give you another number of dice that you get to roll. Sixes mean you cancel out uh, hits that you got, because every hit would do damage, and in this damage is done directly to your attributes, in the case of a normal attack, that's to your strength. And if you roll ones and still take damage, every one you rolled uh, up to the number of damage you took will also do that much damage to your equipment. Again, that can later be repaired, so in this case, your armor. And then magic using, if you cast a spell, it auto-succeeds. You roll six-sided dice. The number of dice is based on how many willpower points you spend. The number of willpower points you spend and the number of dice you roll is how, many, how much power that spell has, which in the case of an offensive spell is how much damage you're doing. But then when you roll the dice, if you roll sixes, each one of those is an extra power to the spell. But if you roll ones, something bad could happen. And the something bad range from not very bad at all like minor things uh that are just going to be like for your player like your player goes a little crazy uh but it doesn't actually have a game effect mm -hmm. all the way up to a demon reaches out from another dimension and drags you in kicking and screaming and instantly kills your character 
And that's the gist of, of most of how this game plays. There's also an interesting... Uh, the initiative system is done with dealing out cards similar to how it is in Savage Worlds. Mm -hmm. I would say very similar, actually. Um, but yeah, but that's the gist of how this system plays. So now we're going to talk about it and we're going to rate and review it. So we, let's start with some negatives. Oh, okay. And we're going to also share negatives uh, and positives. And we're going to move on to positives once we get past the negatives. I always prefer to finish on the positives. So we're going to talk about ones that we thought, but we're also going to talk about other ones from our game group, which if you've been watching our game sessions, that was in addition to us, that was Juliana, that was Louisa, and that was Tyler. And we're going to, we, we talked a lot about this game system. So uh, why don't you start us off with some, some negatives that either you or someone else had um, mentioned. My main negative was that, um, was that the attributes don't raise during the game. The mm. attributes that you, the well, however many points you put into them at the beginning of the game, yes. that's how they are forever. Yeah, when you gain experience in this, so there's no levels, this is a levelless system. And when you gain experience in this, you can put the experience towards either raising your, uh, what they call talents in this? Skills? No, 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 no. Oh. Uh, uh, the extra abilities. The talents, ones. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are talents. You can raise talents, which to raise a talent, the cost in experience points, which it seemed to be the average experience points we got were between about six and eight a session uh, per person. That seemed to be the average. Mm -hmm. So the cost to raise an, a talent, which ta some talents go up to level three. There are some that are just level one and that's it. But there are some that can go up to level three. The cost was the level you want to raise it to. Uh, you can only raise it one level at a time. But the level you want to raise it to times three. So a new talent at level one was only three points. That was very cheap and easy to do. But a talent getting it to level two now became six points. So that was basically like most, if not all, of your experience for a session. And a talent getting it to level three was a bit more expensive at nine Points usually meant a few extra points you have left over from spending most of your points previously, plus all of your your for a session. Now that didn't seem so bad, but then also the experience the the experience could be spent on on skill points, and skill points were much more expensive. They were the level you wanted to raise it to, and you could raise it way higher. Uh, but they were the level you wanted to raise it to times five. So you really had to save up to raise experience points. And attributes, yeah, attributes could not be raised. So you have to be playing the same character for a while if you want to improve their their skills, which skills are better than attributes, but yeah, but attributes could not be raised. So I did think the the, the experience system in this uh, was a bit slow to raise skills also. I think that's where I'm going with this is in addition to what you said about the fact that attributes were not adjustable. They, that Your attributes that you got, and that could be tough, um, if the first character you made, you didn't really fully understand the system. If you if you a jack of all traded their attributes, which you should not do in this system, I thoroughly recommend that when you're when you're making your character in Forbidden Lands, you should pick which skills, which group of skills, based on which attribute or attributes you really want to focus on. And I mean, at the very least, you should have one of your attributes be a five. And if that attribute is a five, then the connected skills you should try to have them at least at least a, th uh, a lot of the ones that you really really want to do should get up there to the full three points that you can get in them mm -hmm. because then you're rolling eight dice and you're really likely to succeed really likely to succeed especially with being able to push it if you um if you get a six if you start with a six in an attribute which is possible if you match a a class and a a kin that give you a larger possible uh, starting attribute of the same attribute. It can, you can possibly start at a six. If you start with a six, then you can get away with skills only at two and have more skills at a two, and you're still incredibly likely to succeed. But I don't recommend starting without at least one of your attributes at a five. And also, it's very dangerous to start with strength of less than a three mm -hmm. because that makes it, because you, your strength is also your hit points in physical combat. It makes it very easy to to take down characters with less than, than three strength. That is definitely a big recommend to mitigate the the, the, the um, possible concerns that we have with the fact that you can't change your attributes once you start and the fact mm -hmm. that skills are so slow to go up. Mm -hmm. So that the, uh, there's a couple issues. Anything else? Uh, what else? Uh, I know, uh, so the dice rolling system in this, the just literally rolling for sixes. Mm -hmm. 
I want to uh, talk about something that Louisa talked about a lot. So now th this this was a bit of a divisive point amongst our group was the actual game system. So some of us quite liked it, liked how quick and easy it was to see if you'd succeeded or not, um, how quick and easy and user friendly the main skill system was. Uh, specifically, Tyler and I really liked it. You and Louisa liked it, but less. And Louisa did have problems well, with it. I, I liked I liked that you it was easy to do mm -hmm. because I mean you're just you just need sixes. Yeah. And it's not like every other RPG that we've played, I mean, you can like we played Savage Worlds for years and I was still like at the end of like campaigns being like, uh, did I did I pass? Because I wasn't sure like what I was looking for. Like my my I'm not good with numbers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the sixes made it yeah, easy for you. So if you just tell me, like, you just need sixes, like, I was fine. So you actually quite liked that then. You enjoyed yeah, that part of the system. I thought it was really easy just to know whether you succeeded or not. Right. Instead of me rolling and then having you basically say, oh, you succeeded or you failed. Because after five years, I still didn't okay. know if I succeeded or failed. <laughs> so you were you were very positive on that because it was easy to read. Yeah. Was it sixes or successes? Okay, do I have sixes? Yes. Uh, is it opposed to who has the more sixes? Okay, boom. Louisa was a little less positive on it. I think some of that might have been because uh, her character had gone a little jack of all trades and she had trouble passing a lot of her roles. But we didn't know that when we were making characters that we should avoid that. So that does go back to my previous gripe that I had talked about. But she also just in general said she did not like the whole the better you are at something, just the more dice you get, not the easier it was to roll dice you already mm -hmm. had. She prefers like, okay... I'm better at this, so I still roll the same dice, but now I'm it succeeding. Be like four or better. Or yes. Something. See, and that would confuse me. <laughs> See, but she wanted him, and, and I think that that that's part of the thing is is this is a very different system than we're used to. Like, if every skill had like a different a different number that I needed, that's that's where I get lost. And so I'm you, like, you and I'm like, I don't even know. Did I pass? I don't know. So you actually, <laughs> so you actually quite like the way it was. With yeah. This, just just give me a number. Just get more the, yeah. more more dice. And need to see if you get sixes. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Louisa was on the other side. She didn't quite like it. Now, this I don't think is a problem with the system, uh, particularly. Though, actually, Juliana really didn't like it, even though she seemed to enjoy uh, at least two thirds of the games. She said she really didn't like the system. I think that where I'm going with this is that while I don't think it's a problem because I quite liked the system, I think it's an issue. Not a problem, but an issue because the system can be divisive. So it's like, it's one of those things where you're going to really like it or you're really not going to like it. And I mean, and that's going to be a person, it's going to be very much a personal uh, preference issue. Because with our gaming group, it was split pretty down the middle. Where about 40% of the gaming group did not like the way the the skill system worked in this. So that, that definitely was an issue. Another uh, minor issue, even though the systems are similar... And they are very similar. It's all about rolling six-sided dice and trying to get six and get sixes and not wanting to get ones. Um, it still was a different system, slightly different for the armor and for the spells. Mm -hmm. And that could that became a little confusing. Even though I had read through all of the books before we played, uh, I kept forgetting. Okay, how does magic work again? And that was an issue. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been better if they'd have made magic literally just like the skill system. Like you just had a skill and it's like, okay, I roll these dice. Sixes are successes. Mm -hmm. More successes may, might mean extra damage, just like with, with an attack. Ones are bad, and um, but only if I push it. Mm -hmm. And then if you push it, the ones should have been um, either damage to the stat or, you know, maybe uh, maybe then have the chart like they did, the chart for the, the possible negative mm -hmm. side effects. But it, I did feel like making the magic a different system a similar but different system um just made it more confusing it was unnecessary uh that being said i think once you get in the swing of things it could be okay but juliana who was playing our only magic user took a real a real dislike mm -hmm. to how different the magic system was because she was having trouble remembering how to use it a lot so there's another gripe okay so let's go back to positives we've already been touching on some positives uh i like the system i love okay I think the whole press your luck element being put in was awesome. Like, that is just really fun. Um, I love that there's a built-in re-roll. And that re-roll 
has a risk and reward system in there. It's like, okay, so I'm going to roll again. If I get ones, I'm possibly going to do damage to myself. Or if it's ones on my equipment die, like my weapon or, or my lock picks, I might damage them too. But every point of damage I do is going to give me a willpower. And those willpower, oh my god, you can activate those amazing abilities. If you're a spellcaster, you can cast amazing spells. Those willpower were all important. Mm -hmm. And you do recover, even though you do damage to your stats. As long as you have some time before before like an, uh, a combat happens, you have time to recover. You can recover mm -hmm. those you can wait a little, uh, wait a number of hours and, and recover those stats. I think the press your luck element was really cool. I really like that. What what are some positives you want to throw out? Um, I liked that you could um, completely customize your own character. Uh, how do you mean? Well, because usually with like role playing games, there's templates. Oh, you mean because it's classless? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So it's like you could you could pretty much, you know, do whatever do you do whatever want. you wanted. It, and it, I was felt very... it was it was similar it was almost similar to like building like a character in um like one of the Elder Scrolls games because okay. there were cuz you know like I was a goblin and I did get like goblin talents or whatever yeah, yeah, everyone starts with so their it is talent, like yeah. you know you you pick a you pick a race and you have like these yeah. innate talents but then you know like in Skyrim you can make like an orc mage or something and orcs aren't meant to be mages but you can do it and you could have done it but <laughs> you, you but you did go you did go a hundred percent to stereotype and made a goblin rogue yeah that being said but but yeah but you could have done but whatever I, you I wanted. like i like that um because i'm normally sneaky stabby characters but there's always that like one or two sneaky stabby skills where i'm like i never use that so you just didn't take them yeah which one did you avoid but there was something you just you were like yeah, yeah there were there were a couple where I was like yeah no you mainly focused in on sleight of hand and um and stealth which you like never yeah. failed either of those because yeah. you had so many dice because you had like a six you had a six in agility mm -hmm. so you got six attribute dice and then I think you had like at least a two if not a three in each of those skills yeah and then also your strength was at least a three mm -hmm. and then you had that special. That special talent for knife fighting, which gave you an extra die when you were using mm -hmm. knives. So you did a whole lot of knife fighting, too, which also gave you a lot of dice. Yeah, no, the, um, I also, uh, I want to throw this out there. So you, you're, you're basically, to sum that up, customizability, customization ability. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I don't think I'm saying yeah. real words. But, you know, <laughs> but the, the, the how customizable the characters yes. are. Yes. Now, another thing I want to throw out is I love, love, love the the system for the uh the the pride so you pick what you're prideful of and then you, after rolling and even after pressing your luck and doing the press your luck uh element you can still roll that as a last ditch effort but again there's risk and reward reward because if you still fail you lose you lose your pride for that session and one whole other session before getting a new pride back mm -hmm. at the beginning of the next session after that. So so th I, I thought that was really cool. That was really fun. Um, I really liked... Uh, I thought the combat was pretty easy. I like, again, sixes. Mm -hmm. Very easy to see. Um, I liked the initiative cards and for the same reason why I like it in Savage Worlds. I think it's a real quick, easy way to see if you win. And I liked... Again, we no, nobody took them, but they were talents in this to give you extra cards just like there are in savage worlds and then you pick the better of the two and put the mm -hmm. other one back in the deck i liked how uh so I, after we played the first game and i went and bought a bunch of other stuff now I, we got we got the game for free but then i went and bought extra stuff because i was enjoying it so much so i bought the the game master screen which i thought was very helpful because there were a lot of tables i kept having to look up and then suddenly having it in front of me was very helpful i do recommend the game master screen very much and i bought the deck of cards and i really liked those cards because they sh they were you were able to angle them to be like okay i haven't used any of my skills yet okay i turn it this way and i've used my slow skill my slow uh, um action i should mm -hmm. say my slow action i turn it this way i've used my fast action you turn it completely around if you use both actions and that's really important because if you want to save an action to parry or dodge mm -hmm. you needed to know that that you still had that action um so yeah no i i think um in my opinion, I think those parts of the game system were very excellent. My gripe I had about the different systems 
is again it's smaller because they're not completely different systems they don't feel completely incompatible they're still six-sided dice and still ones and sixes are the most important things but they were different enough that they did get a little confusing and that was a little bit of a gripe but overall i liked the system mm -hmm. also i really like the monsters i really like the world i like i like the way monsters work with their bizarre random attacks like sometimes they might try to claw at you or sometimes they may try to swallow you whole which is really neat mm -hmm. um i love the whole the legacy game aspect that they put into this so board games in modern day especially adventure type games have taken a lot of inspiration from role-playing games and i would say nowhere is this more evident than in legacy games but legacy games have have gone the extra mile and, and have you putting stickers on the board to alter things permanently this feels like it it took that inspiration that the legacy games had kind of taken from role-playing games and takes it back and puts it in role-playing games so you have a big map and you move around the map and when you discover locations you put stickers on them to permanently mark them as okay this is the winter's redoubt that we discovered way back in our in this n number adventure mm -hmm. and this this is bogmire that we discovered i'm actually naming places that i invented that we discovered um you can make all of your own adventures which in our three to keep them spoiler free i i used all ones i created they also have a book of adventures which i did buy also because actually i feel like I'm, I'm spoiling this a little bit i'm gonna give this a positive rating obviously because <laughs> i went they sent me a free box and i went and bought everything else that they make for it so yeah obviously i was enjoying it um okay so do you have anything else you want to talk about I with this system i think so so we covered a lot of the good stuff yeah. and we covered some of the issues people had so now we're going to tell you what our ratings are but we're also going to tell you what the ratings are of the group so we can figure out you know like i say this system can be a bit divisive and you should be aware of that and um fully aware of that also uh we touched on some of the things that we recommend so i recommend if you're making a character don't have your strength start less than three i think that could be very very mm -hmm. uh tough to play a character with less than three strength also do not start with it uh without having at least one attribute as a five and if you do have that attribute as a five try to have a lot of the skills that you want to use in that attribute as a three and if you can start with an attribute at a six and you do then you can get away with them as twos on those skills so i highly recommend that also um i would say yeah the attributes never change so also weigh your options carefully on whether you want to start as young adult or old because young gets the most attribute points but starts with the least skills but you can get skills later mm -hmm. whereas when you get all the way to old they start with the least attribute points but start with the most skills again skills are tough to get later but you can get more later mm -hmm. so so do weigh that uh those options well i actually think the one in the middle the adults seem to be the most balanced yeah. uh of the three so do you want to want to give this a rating first okay so what, what are you going to give it i'm going to give it a six out of ten okay so six is you liked it but you have to be in the mood to play it again yeah okay so you did like it but you weren't wowed by it yeah i mean i enjoyed playing the games but i never like during the week i was never like "Ooh, i can't wait until this weekend to play forbidden lands you know <laughs> and, and whereas when we did like when we've done previous uh campaigns of like noblest or savage worlds you have been like yeah that. you've been like antsy to get back into the game okay so that's understandable now i'm a, i'm significantly higher i'm gonna give forbidden lands eight out of ten stars i found it uh very enjoyable I love all the there's tons of tables in here which make it very user friendly for a game master because if you want to quickly come up with the way uh they have you come up with stories it's meant to be rather episodic though eventually reoccurring villains will present themselves and you'll be like okay this is going to be a guy i'm going to have show up again mm -hmm. um but you can roll up random uh adventure sites and then just have them ready and when your players come into an adventure site you're like boom this is my adventure site and it's very user friendly for that and if you don't want to bother doing that they do have a book that you can buy separately which has a bunch of adventure sites i thought this was great fun as a game master i got to get a little creative with this which i really enjoy i love doing that and i found it very easy to maintain control of all of my bad guys generally speaking so i i really liked the system i'm giving it eight out of ten stars i thoroughly liked it and if i had a group of people who also like the system uh i would not hesitate to run a game of this again i really did like it i would also like to at some point play possibly play as a player character in this again we'll see but now we're going to talk a little bit about the range of scores that everybody else 
gave it and it runs the gamut. So at the end of it, Juliana was was the most negative. She gave it a three, mm-hmm. which is really rough. That's a very low score. Now, the reason she went that low is she was very much not liking the way the magic system works and not liking that a really unlucky roll could mean that you could lose your character, technically you could lose your character on your first spell cast. And that's understandable. She really didn't like it. If she had made another character, she wouldn't have been a spellcaster. But uh, that really rubbed her the wrong way. Um, next up, we had Louisa, who was a little bit more positive than you. She was at a 6.5. She said she, she liked it, but she wasn't a fan specifically of the rule system. And then last up, we had Tyler, who was right up there with me and gave it an 8. So this, the number, I mean, there's like a wide variety of ratings here, which is what I mean by saying that this rule system can be quite divisive. So you had Tyler and I at the top end, both giving it eights. You had then like Louisa and you around the middle uh, of it, giving it like a six and a 6.5 respectively. And Juliana all the way at the low end, giving it a three. So be aware that this rule system can be a bit divisive and maybe thoroughly explain it to your players before playing and make sure that you're with people that, that, are cool with playing a system that while it can have some depth to it is really just about rolling dice and seeing if you get sixes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just, you're just looking for sixes or higher than sixes when you roll eights and tens and twelves, but you get, you get what I'm saying. So there you have it. So that is our full rating and review for forbidden lands. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Lynn liked it and everybody else in the group was somewhere, you know, on, on the 10 scale all over the place. So eight stars from me, six stars from Lynn. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to give it a like, share it on all forms of social media. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns on Forbidden Lands, feel free to put them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, share it on all forms of social media, and subscribe to the board game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube, and hit that little bell icon on my channel so you get updates every time I upload a new video. And until next time, Game on.